Hello everyone, I've been analyzing some new brain imaging data in myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, or MECFS, and I wanted to give you a sneak peek at the results because they show significant activation of microglia throughout the brain, which tells us that MECFS involves brain inflammation. Now, this is the first place that I'm showing these results. They've not been presented at conferences. Um, they haven't been submitted for publication. I just now ran the analyses. So um, this is positron emission tomography, or PET, and it uses a radiopharmaceutical. It's called fluorine 18 DPA714, and it highlights microglia when they're activated, when they're in their activated inflammatory state. Now, if you want to know more about what that means and why it's important, I'll link to one of my microglia videos at the end of this one. So be sure to check that out if you want to find out more. Basically, when microglia are activated, they release pro-inflammatory signals in your brain that change the way that your neurons function, and they cause all sorts of negative experiences. And I hypothesize that chronic brain inflammation drives the fatigue and the cognitive issues and, and all the other symptoms of MECFS. Now, I've been showing brain inflammation using MRI techniques, and I've talked about that in plenty of previous videos, but now I'm testing the hypothesis using positron emission tomography. So instead of MRI, I'm using PET, which is a completely different technology. So if both the MRI and the PET scan show similar things. They, if they both show inflammation in the brain, we can be very confident that we're actually seeing true brain inflammation in MECFS. All right, so what I'm looking at right now is 29 individuals, roughly um, half MECFS and half healthy controls. And let me show you where we're seeing the activated microglia. Okay, so because there's these are all new numbers I'm working with. So I'm, again, I'm just now running the statistical tests and looking at the results. I don't have figures prepared. That takes more work. So I'm going to use the Harvard Whole Brain Atlas, and you can find a link in the video, video description if you want to see what that looks like. Um, but I'm going to use the FDG PET images, and that basically shows brain metabolism in normal circumstances. So the, the important thing here is the colors that you see, they don't represent microglia activation. I'll have to prepare those figures later. I'm only showing, I'm only using this to show you where in the brain we see significantly activated microglia. So the colors are just a template so you know where in the brain we're, we're talking about. Okay, so first, um, I found abnormally activated microglia in the bilateral insula, and bilateral means it's in both sides of the brain. Okay, so truthfully, even if the insula was the only region affected, it would be enough to cause MECFS symptoms. The insula is so critical to the human experience, it's impossible to overstate its importance. The insula is responsible for sensory information, emotional information, feelings in your body, and, and more importantly, how your emotions and your sensations and your understanding of yourself are integrated into how you ultimately feel. I mean, like on a holistic level, are you doing well? Are you doing poorly? The insula is critical for making that assessment available to your consciousness. So incredibly important in the grand scheme of things. So to fully explain just all, all the things this region does, what the insula does, and how it's related to MECFS, I would have to do a whole separate video on that, and I probably will later. But for right now, I just wanna say that seeing microglia abnormalities in the bilateral insula, like we have in this new analysis, that in itself is enough to uh, cause MECFS symptoms. Um, but we see abnormal microglia in a lot of other areas, not just the bilateral insula. So the next one is the bilateral precuneus, and this is this big swath of cortex I'm kind of marking here. And this is also involved in self-awareness and, and your conscious feelings of control over your body. It, it really drives 
or helps to dictate where your attention is. So whether your attention is focused focused inward to your body or outward to things outside of your body, to the things around you. And it really processes the emotional component of pain as well. And it does a lot of other things. Um, so like the insula, the precuneus is a real, it's an integrative site. So it really takes a lot of different inputs and it generates your overall experience of the world and how you relate to the environment around you. Okay, so the bilateral hippocampus, that's the next site. Uh, a really fascinating site. So there's been studies, imaging studies over the past 10 years, multiple studies that have found that when you have abnormal processing in your parahippocampus, it's associated with fatigue. And that's been shown in numerous autoimmune and inflammatory disorders. And it's also important in a lot of cognitive tasks as well. So this is another region that's just so important that having problems here is enough to, to cause severe debilitation. So another important one. So then we found a lot of microglia activation in the bilateral medial orbital frontal cortex, and it's this area I'm marking right here. And this is responsible for reward and motivation and kind of uh, what we call goal-directed behavior. It's how much, how much value does something have to drive your behavior and your decisions to do something versus to not do it. So if, if you're thinking about doing something, how do you determine whether it's worth the effort? Well, that's decided by this region, or at least a lot by this region. And so if you have disruption to this part of the OFC, it really removes the value of things so much that in severe cases, you, you can't do anything. It's, it's example, for example, when you have a fever and you can't get out of bed, um, this is partly the reason why. It's because your brain has decided that there is nothing that is valuable enough for you to make the attempt to do it. And that's driven by prefrontal regions like the medial portion of the OFC. So incredibly important. And we know that this is part of the sickness response where microglia are activated and it disrupts your ability to do things. And also, it's not just like, you know, getting food or water or going to the bathroom, but it also affects your relationships as well because it affects your emotions and your interactions with others. And so if you have problems in this part of the OFC, it can really um, knock down the value of relationships and it can cause social isolation, which is something else that we see when someone gets really sick and they have inflammation in the brain, there tends to be so social isolation. And this is one of the regions that drive that effect. Okay, so uh, there's lots of other bilateral regions in, in like the temporal lobe, and I'm going to talk about those another time. Um, but I just wanted to mention that there's, in addition to these bilateral regions where it's in the left and right, there are a lot of regions that were significant in either the left or the right hemisphere, but not in both. So one of them is the right amygdala, and this encodes negative emotions like fear and anxiety and your ability to process threats and how threatening you find things around you. Uh, the right rostral mid mid middle frontal gyrus, and that's a major cognitive processing place. So memory and attention and executive function, and executive function is how you change your attention from one thing to another. Then we have the right posterior cingulate, and this is part of the default mode network. And it's basically uh, what your brain does when you're not actively engaged in a task. So kind of like when your brain is in a maintenance state, it's when you're, again, not doing anything, just maybe kind of sitting there. Maybe you're in your mind, I guess, tends to float to different things. That's part of a process. So you're remembering past events. You're thinking about the future, you're thinking about conversations you had or conversations you will have. You may be daydreaming and you may be having a memory consolidation. So really, really important for your overall brain function. And so disruptions here can, can alter a lot of um, parts of your experience. So we also find, found a lot of microglia activation in the left hippocampus. And this is just a classic learning and memory region. Uh, and then um, also a critically important one is the left thalamus. And the thalamus is the relay for almost all sensory information. I think the major exception would be 
olfactory or smell, really important for sleep. And really it's a part of pretty much every experience that you have involves some routing through the thalamus. And there's so many critical brain regions, you know, just, I mean, just again, the thalamus alone, you know, if you ever talk to someone who had like uh, some kind of stroke that affected the thalamus, they'll tell you that it affects every part of their experience. So again, that's another region where just that one could explain the symptoms. But what we're seeing is that there's regions all across the brain that is that have elevated abnormal microglia in MECFS. And there's so many regions that we're seeing now that I don't think this is about a very specific region, you know, because as I said, we see things in the front of the brain, we're seeing issues in the back of the brain, we're seeing uh, a lot of things in between. So this is really a brain-wide issue. And so I believe it's safe to say, especially with these new results, that the MECFS brain is an inflamed brain. So what do we do with this information? Uh, first of all, it was really important for us to run the study because there was kind of a controversy in the literature about microglia and MECFS. There was an old paper in 2014 that showed significant microglia activation in CFS. But then there was a paper in 2022 that showed no abnormal microglia activation in CFS. So you got one paper saying there is and one paper saying there isn't. So which one's right? They can't both be right. And so there needed to be some kind of tiebreaker. Uh, so we ran the study using a more uh, modern radio pharmaceutical. So those two earlier studies, the 2014 and 2022 studies, they used a first generation agent and we used a second generation agent. The second gen agents are more specific to activated microglia. So they give a more accurate measurement. So using this, we also see the activated microglia just like the 2014 paper did. So when our paper comes out, I think it'll clearly agree with the earlier paper having the conclusion that MECFS involves microglia activation and inflammation in the brain. And so now that with this additional paper, now that the bulk of the evidence points to one direction, that'll help guide other researchers in deciding what studies they need to design and run. So the, the bottom line here for me as a researcher is that there's now enough neuroimaging data to know that neuroinflammation is what we need to be targeting in MECFS. We have to find or develop treatments that reduce brain inflammation if we're going to improve MECFS. So I've been working a lot in this area. If you follow my videos, you hear me talking about clinical trials all the time. I hope to have even more exciting news for you soon on that front. So I hope you can follow the channel and the other groups that are keeping up to date on all the scientific findings and the clinical trials. That way, as things become available for reducing brain inflammation, you will hear about it. So uh, that's it for today. Just wanted to kind of um, give you a quick update while I'm taking new data and running all the tests and looking to see if there's any issues. I just want to kind of give you a little sneak peek and let you see things as I'm seeing them. So I'm going to get back to the actual analyses now and keep working on it so we can write up the paper and get the official version out. Um, there's a lot going on right now. It's, there's so much. It's, it's hard for me to even decide what to talk about each week because there's about 20 things I could talk about, uh, but I don't have time to do that. So I'll just pick one each week and give you a quick update. There's a lot of good things on my plate, which is a good situation for me to be in. And I, I'll get all the information out to you as soon as I can. So I'll be back to do a new video soon. All right. Thanks.